through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 210. I'm Spencer. I am Greg. Today we're giving you our DVD rundown for the week of December 4th. December 4th. Wow, we are in remember, December. Remember, the 4th of December. <laughs> I feel like we could do that every month. I it know. ends in a four. I know. Month. And there's no, it's not even like there's a V for Vendetta thing either. I just, nah, that just came in my head. I like it. Sorry. You can go with it. This is what you get when you watch us. V for Vendetta is always good. It's always true. reason to mention that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's a, quite a bit of stuff coming out this yeah. today, this week, I should say. Yes. <laughs> that is worthwhile. Uh -huh. uh, the big one, the obvious one. Yes. The Dark Knight Rises yes. is the first one we're going to talk about. This is the conclusion of the Nolan trilogy. Yes, uh, it's indeed. somewhat of a controversial one. Some people really? love it. Some people were not pleased mm. with this conclusion. I personally was a fan of it. I, I don't know any of the people that weren't pleased. I, I enjoy it. Like, some people thought it the, the, like, the ending was anticlimactic. They didn't like it. So it's the, basically people who loved the Lord of the Rings movie but complained about the 15 endings at Lord of the Rings at the Return of the King. Oh my god, it was a bad conclusion. Everything else was absolutely perfect, but yeah. this one thing was wrong. I, so I'm gonna I actually would say I preferred the ending of this to the Lord of the Rings. Oh, but, definitely. Um, I enjoyed it. Anyway, this is the f the, fin the finale of the Christopher Nolan mm -hmm. trilogy, obviously. Yes. So it's got a much hubble blue. Um, as expected, there's going to be a uh, trilogy yeah. uh, releases. Collector sets, yeah, box exactly. sets. Yeah, there's all sorts know, of packages. stuff coming out. Uh, we're going to start off by just talking about the release itself. Yes. Um, it comes out on, let's see, Blu-ray, DVD, and Ultraviolet, mm -hmm. which is good. It, um, has a fair amount of content on it. First of the one that's the most significant, in my opinion, is there's a documentary on it about the Batmobiles. Awesome. The evolution the of them, the different, they were well, that, you know, oh, the, and the like, 60s, the oh, nice. the Michael Keaton one, wow, cool. you know, so all the stuff. Nolan, just, no, no, we're talking wow. all the, the history of the Batmobile, cool. which is very cool. And they're actually doing... Uh, somewhat of a tour right now going around the country with all the oh, Batmobiles. That's right. So yeah. that's that's what this is all about. Okay. So that's pretty sweet. It all comes together. It all comes together. Additionally, there's there's a whole bunch of featurettes about the Dark Knight Rises itself. You know, like one, ones that pop out to me. There's one about the prologue, aka the high altitude hijacking. Mm -hmm. There's one about Batman versus Bane. There's one about the game day destruction, demolishing a city street. Uh, the ones that seem most interesting to me are The Journey of Bruce Wayne, mm -hmm. uh, The End of a Legend, Shadows and Light in Large Format. I'm curious what that's hmm. really all about. And mm -hmm. then Gotham's Reckoning, because I really think Gotham is such an important player that really didn't get their due ah. in the Batman series until The Dark Knight Rises. Interesting. So I hmm. think that's going to be one that I'm really looking forward to. In terms of the release, also note that the Blu-ray will include... Um, nearly an hour's worth of IMAX footage. So if you've seen hmm. the Blu-ray for The Dark Knight, gotcha. you can see it switches uh, ah. aspect ratio. Gotcha. Sometimes be full frame versus sometimes wide frame. That being said, the DVD will feature an anamorphic widescreen presentation. Okay. So presumably without mm -hmm. the IMAX yeah. switching of format. Additionally, uh, there is a limited edition with a Batman cowl Ooh. case. Uh, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of like the novelty cases. Yeah. It's really hard to fit on a yeah. shelf, but you know that's out there. Though it's I, as far as I could tell, you can't. There's no price on like Amazon or anything hmm. for it, and it's like sign up to be notified sort of with it. So hmm. I don't know what exactly the release of it is. If it's not a wearable mask and no, cape, it's, it's then the I broken don't care. one from the movie. If it's a wearable broken one no, from the movie, no, it's, then it's ah, like on a little plaque. Come on, Warner Brothers. And then, Warner Brothers, right? Yes, yeah, yes okay. movies. And then the other notable one is the Dark Knight trilogy, which has all yes. three films and a book on the production, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the big issue with that that I have is that there is another box set coming, the Dark Knight trilogy Ultimate Collector's Edition, yep. which is going to be released sometime in 2013. Yeah, always I would, one of those. I would advocate if you're going to wait and buy all three of them that you would wait for that one and not yeah. get the first first iteration. Yeah. But that being said, if you bought the first two, it might not necessarily be worthwhile unless there's something really crazy, mm -hmm. Bell's worthy in the Collector's yeah. Edition. You might as well that's, just go buy the single. Yeah, that's that that whole attempt for studios to be like, how else can we sell these movies in other ways? 
we'll yeah. repackage them in collections 18 times. So, you know, as I said, like, if you if you already have the first two, you might as well just buy this single edition release. Mm -hmm. Unless the collector's edition finally has a lot of much more interesting stuff, yeah. like, you know, yeah. Christopher Nolan commentaries or something like yeah. that. Which... Or, you know, if you're someone like me who only owns The Dark Knight, Oh, then really? maybe don't know when Batman begins. No, then maybe it or might be. I, it's not like I haven't seen it, but it's maybe it might be cheaper film. to ha get a trilogy mm -hmm. than it might be to get one or two of the movies if probably. you only had it's one. Possible. But if you have two of them, probably not worth yeah. your time. So that's definitely the big one of the. Yeah. The, I mean, it's not surprising. At least, at least in terms of um, noteworthiness, yes. there's a lot of other smaller ones that are equally. Yes, but that's good the, quality wise. Yeah, but that's the huge, obviously like big release of big the week. blockbuster yeah. release. Yes. In terms of other smaller ones that are quality mm -hmm. that are coming out, Beasts of the Southern Wilds coming out. Yes. It's a Blu-ray DVD digital copy edition. For those who are not familiar with it, it is the story of a um, little girl, right? Little girl who's living with her father, um, who's sick. You know, the polar ice caps are melting, and they're uh, preparing for a flood in their community. That's right. And the unleashing of the ancient Orcs, which are a prehistoric creature being released from the melting polar ice caps. Hmm. And it all Neat. takes place sort of from the perspective of the six-year-old girl in the movie. Right, yeah. Which I'm not even going to try and pronounce her name. Um, yeah, me not, neither. It's right here, but it's, it's, it's a really beautiful film. Really mm. beautiful. Well shot. Well, I mean, the acting in it's phenomenal. I definitely think it's one of the better indie releases. I think it won... Best dramatic film at Sundance, hmm. as I recall. But yeah, I great, great film. In terms of the the release, you're going to want to get the Blu-ray DVD yes. digital copy edition because there's special features for just the D there's just the Blu-ray. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. For the Blu-ray and the DVD versions, there's the making of, there's theatrical trailer, and that's pretty much it. But on the hmm. Blu-ray, you have a deleted scenes with commentary, okay. uh, the auditions for. I mean, gosh, Quavenzalo, yeah. Zane Wallace. I don't know how you pronounce Quavenz it. Han Wallace? Yeah. yeah. Her, and, her and the father, Dwight Her Henry, are both, their auditions are there. Interesting. You have uh, one about the music of the film, and then you have a uh, feature about the Oroks, hmm. which are the creatures that oh, yes. are believed oh, yes, to be yes, Korean Oroks. Yes. So, um, Hearing you say it and then seeing it written completely different in yes. my, my weird yes. memory banks. But needless to say, great film. Seems like a decent release, especially mm -hmm. for like an indie film. So oh, yeah. I would say this is very worthwhile if you're thinking uh, of picking it up. Yeah, so come rent it here, Scarecrow. Yeah. Next up, we got another sort of smaller release, but one that did pick up a bit of a following as well, and that's mm -hmm. The Odd Life of Timothy Green. <laughs> you oh, have a yes, Blu-ray DVD combo for this one, no digital uh, copy. Mm. But this is the story about a uh, childless couple who bury a box in their backyard <laughs> containing all their wishes for an infant. Soon a child is born, but he's not all that he appears. Years. It says uh, Jennifer Garner and mm -hmm. Joel Edgerton in it, who I'm a big fan of both of them. It's a very entertaining video on the internet uh, it's from a number of months ago about kids crying at the react at the end of the movie. It's it's got a bit of it's got a bit of a skewer over time, but a lot of a lot of people really really like the film. It, it mm -hmm. looked a little crazy uh, from the trailers and whatnot, but it's gotten a fairly good reception for the most part. I would yeah. say so. It's good that way in terms of the release. You know, again, sort of the similar thing where the there's special Blu-ray features uh -huh. versus DVD. On the Blu-ray, you have This Is Family, Discover How This Vibrant, Uplifting Story Took Root and Blossomed. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a feature commentary from the director. Okay. On the DVD, you have deleted scenes with commentary by the director. And then uh, This Gift music video, hmm. which is by Glenn Hazard, music who um, was an Oscar winner for Best Song for I'm just, Once. I'm just curious, does anybody ever actually care about music videos on DVDs and Blu-rays? Really? If like, it's a musical thing, maybe. Like, but then that's less a music video and more like a segment of the film almost. But. For instance, I'll, I'll give you an example of one that was good and should have had a musical one and weirdly didn't. Uh, Eight Mile. Eight Mile seems like the perfect one to have the Eight Mile okay, music yeah, video on it. I guess. Strangely, they did not. They had the Superman music video by Eminem on it and not Eight Mile. I just Why you would do that blows my mind. I don't, I don't know. I just don't. I can't ever imagine, even when I was young, giving a crap about a music video. I think the only one that I've ever actually watched, even, or enjoyed, is from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and that's because it's of the song Killer okay, Clowns, which is weird and uh, before my time. Beer. Real Big Fish. Love that on the basketball release. 
So okay. there, there are there are certain ones that pop out, right. but you know it feels you can like find them on YouTube. It feels like yeah. Now that YouTube's <laughs> around, you're right. It's not as big a deal, but it's also just you're right. It's somewhat a filler content. Yeah. So it's hey, well, let's put a gag reel from this dramatic yeah. film. Yeah. Finally, we're going to talk the Criterion release mm. of the week. There's a few of them, but the one we're going to talk about is Brazil yes. from director Terry Gilliam. Is this the first time Criterion has I believe so, awesome. yes. yes. Not just an HD bump? Nope. So in, in terms of this release, you're talking the Terry Gilliam film mm -hmm. starring was it Jonathan Price, Robert De Niro. You're a big fan of the film, right? Oh, yeah. What do you like about this film? Uh, well, it's a great... I think Brazil is like, for me, is like 1984 just plus Terry Gilliam's weird mm. brain. Like, it's his, it's almost like his version of yeah, 1984. Yeah, I could say that. For me, it's more of just like, I think of it more as a Terry Gilliam sort of weird brain thing. Obviously, he did things like, you know, I think 12 Monkeys was mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Um, he's a very quirky director, and this yes. is sort of like one of the first real examples mm -hmm. of his quirkiness, as opposed to like, you know, Monty Python, yeah. which is okay. much more, is quirky, but it's comedic. Yeah. He, uh, and much like, more behind the scenes. Right. I mean, but he was he's too, also like, gone like a lot more, you know, in his own stuff darker yes. quirkier like it's okay. really it's it's much more interesting to sort of get a perspective of him as a filmmaker and this is one of the first examples yes. you can really sort of really see kind of where he was going yes. yeah that's so, one of the things for me is like all the great things that have come from Taylor Gilliam this is almost like I don't think it's the first of his films but it's definitely early no, in the it's probably one of the first real breakouts yeah. though yeah in terms of this, you know, you have the restored digital transfer of the director's cut, the 142-minute cool. director's oh, cut, supervised yeah. by Terry Gilliam. You have an audio commentary by Terry Gilliam. Oh, that would be amazing. And then it gets really crazy in terms of special features. Ooh, do tell, You, you have What is Brazil, a 30-minute okay. onset documentary. You have The Battle of Brazil, a video history, a 60-minute documentary by uh, author and film writer Jack Matthews about the controversy surrounding the film's release. Huh. And then you have the Love Conquers All version of Brazil, a 94-minute cut of the film produced by the studio in an attempt to make it more commercial <laughs> with commentary by Brazil expert David Morgan. That's amazing. Yes. And you have, a, see that. You have other stuff like you know a production notebook with supplements featuring a trove of Brazilian Brazilian stuff from um, Gilliam's personal mm. collection, you know, short documentary that's on the so screenplay, etc. Interview with the screenwriters. I love on-set stuff. Stuff, yeah. stuff that's um, uh, temporarily placed. Mm -hmm. Stuff that's like while the movie was made or when the movie came out. Thing, sure. Things in relation to when the movie was actually being created and coming out rather than like a retrospective like, mm. not like they're bad, but like the cast gets together 20 years later. Right. It's interesting, but it's not as interesting mm -hmm. as like people when it's being done, right after it's done, before sure. they can know the impact and go back and have, be nostalgic no, and totally. hindsight. It's, it's a great release and it's Criterion, so you know oh, it's yeah. going to be good. It's probably going to have sweet cover art, too. Yeah. yeah. So that's it for this week. Mm -hmm. uh, join us next time for a discussion of Bill Murray in honor of the release of Hyde Park on Hudson. Mm -hmm. And as always, we're on MacGuffinPodcast.com, yes. Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, uh, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, we're on Blip, we're on Miro, we're on Roku. You can check in and get glue, get, get, some, get some sticky badges. <laughs> uh, or leave us reviews on iTunes, mm -hmm. all those good places, and uh, we'll see you next time. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.